So I want to talk a little bit about the ratings of the solar panels. You know, how do we come up with these numbers? Um, you know, why is there an open circuit voltage? All that stuff. Why is that important? Okay, so when solar panels were in their infancy, somebody had to decide that they had to measure them all the same. And that was the IEC. So that's the International Electrotechnical Commission. It's actually European, and Europeans wrote most of these requirements for solar panels, or at least the, the test methods for solar panels. So what IEC dictates is that you test the solar panel at 1,000 watts per meter, actually square meter, um, which is a little less than Tucson has, and at an air mass 1.5. Now, air mass is the thickness of the atmosphere, so it's one and a half atmospheres, and that dictates this profile of solar irradiance. And this is wavelength as it gets longer, and depending on how much air mass you have, these peaks move around. So at one and a half air mass, it's slightly lower. Here in Tucson, we're not at one and a half air mass typically in the um, summertime. We're about one, two-ish, because you'd have to be right at the Tropic of, of Cancer. Is cancer the upper one? No, I gotta think about this. I'll just say, you'd have to be right at the, one of the tropic lines to be able to get to an air mass of 1.0 at noon. So you always have more than air mass of one as long as if you're outside that the, the range of the tropic lines. Um, so somewhat important for other technologies, um, amorphous silicon has a fairly small what's called quantum efficiency. Um, SIGs has a very broad quantum efficiency, so the, these air mass numbers sort of get important when you're, when you're trying to flash test something. And the other thing was 25 degrees C. So the solar panel wants to be at 25 degrees C. Why is that? Well, because that's the inside temperature of a typical plant. Um, and so to make it easy for solar manufacturers to measure panels, it was dictated that 25 C is the number. Is that a good number? No, because as soon as you put your solar panel outside, it's never going to be at 25 degrees C. I mean, you'd have to be, I won't say never, but you'd have to be somewhere very cold with an air mass number that's fairly um, low. So let's say you're up on um, Mount Everest, or at least the base camp of Mount Everest. Actually, right there, their air mass is probably like point. Five. <laughs> they got like half an atmosphere, and it's probably a little, little more than that, but they're going to be at 0.5, and they're actually going to be colder than 25C. And so the, uh, the panel will perform differently. So now all solar panels have a temperature coefficient. Um, the SIGS panel you have is 0.43% per degree C. So as you go above 25C, you start losing 0.43% of its power for every degree you go above 25C. Conversely, if you go below 25C, you start adding 0.43% of its power. Um, typically, the, the adding is not a problem unless you are in a really slow, cold environment. You know, we've got some things out in Greenland. We actually did have some panels up in, in Everest Base Station. Um, so they do have to worry about this number because also what it primarily drives up is voltage. Um, and that's what, since power is voltage times current, then it drives up the, the effective power of the, the solar module. So, in reality, when we put these 200 watt panels out in the sun here in Tucson around mid-April, the solar panel is going to be roughly 58 degrees. And, and if you do the math, 
you're going to end up with a solar panel that's roughly around 171 watts if it was 200 watts originally. So you're going to lose power. And so what I always stress to students is keep that solar panel in the sun after any race or after you've used the motor because you need to charge back your battery. And the hotter it gets out, the less power you're going to have. So make sure that you, you get it out there in the morning. Make sure your batteries are always topped off. The other thing I'm going to stress is solar panels, since in the previous discussion we said they were all put in series, cells in series tend to lose um, power when shaded. So you have all these cells that are connected, you know, minus to plus. Plus is actually the back side of the cell. So it's minus to plus, minus to plus, minus to plus. You shade one of these, and you think, oh, it's just going to lose that one cell. Unfortunately, that's not how it works, since this is sort of uh, an active semiconductor device. It starts absorbing power. So when it's shaded, it's no longer making power, it's actually consuming power. And so your effective loss is close to 50% for shading one cell. So we see it every year, people throw backpacks, sweaters, everything else because it's a nice flat surface on top of their cart. Don't do that because you basically killed the output of your solar panel. Um, so keep it clean, keep it in full sun, don't have it half shaded because you won't get half the panel's amount. Um, and since you are in series, you lose all that voltage and you don't have enough voltage to charge the battery. Hi, my name is Wally Stoss. I'm one of the owners here at P3 Solar. Um, we make lightweight, portable solar panels for the outdoor enthusiast as well as the outdoor professional. We sponsor Racing the Sun because we want to educate the adults of the future on the usefulness of solar and running their solar go-kart today gets them into the, the, the idea of renewable energy.